The Wizard of Oz is a beloved movie all around the world. Everyone knows there's no place like home where you can get the heart and the courage to relax your brain. Sorry. But what you might not know is that this film was totally cursed. From one of the four directors laying a slap down on an actor to the Wicked Witch almost losing her actual face. Hi, I'm Mr. Brown, and in this episode of the Brown Film Show, we're going to go over just how f***ed up this movie was behind the scenes. I mean, really f***ed up. I mean, really, really, really f***ed up. Yikes. So the first f***ed up thing you didn't know about The Wizard of Oz is the snow. So whenever you see a snow in a movie or television show, it's not actually real snow. Quite simply, real snow melts. So knowing that, production and set designers tend to come up with clever ways to bring that natural illusion to life. For instance, in Home Alone, they use mashed potato flakes to create the snow. But in The Wizard of Oz, they use asbestos. Yes, you heard me. F***ing asbestos. No. Actually, it was 100% industrial grade crystalline asbestos used mainly for Christmas decoration. Now, I know what you think. Maybe because they didn't have Google in 1939, they didn't know about the health hazards of not breathing in asbestos. And the answer is, they knew. In fact, it was known that breathing asbestos can pose serious health risks. So either they were being cheap and they didn't give a f or it was 1939 and they didn't give a f because back in those days, men were mad. Okay, moving on to the next f***ed up fact about The Wizard of Oz, which is Judy Garland getting clocked in the face. So as the story goes, during the famous scene where Dorothy slaps the cowardly lion, she apparently got the giggles every time she slapped him. She was a teenage girl, and teenage girls laugh at ridiculous situations. There's nothing wrong with that. But the director, Victor Fleming, took the teenage Garland aside and gave her a nice pep talk. He calmly explained to her that we need to get this take so we can move on to the next scene. Psych! Psych! This is 1930s. They shot people for less. He took her to the side and slapped Judy Garland across the chin and told her, and I quote, get in there and work. Bruh. Needless to say, she did the scene right. Moving on to the next up fact about the Wizard of Oz is the Wicked Witch. Remember that scene where the Wicked Witch was talking shit to Dorothy and Glinda and she disappears behind a puff of red smoke? So how the gag works is the actress goes to her mark, the smoke and flames appear, and then the actress, Margaret Hamilton, goes through a trap door located on the floor. The take that was left in the film shows the red smoke appearing before she gets to her mark. An obvious mistake that should have been left on the cutting room floor. So why did they leave it in, huh? Hmm, what are they, what are they doing? Tell you. It's because when they did it a second time, her dress got caught in the trap door, leaving her head above it, and the pyrotechnical flames burnt her face and hands. Not to mention, she's covered from head to toe in toxic copper-based makeup. Margaret suffered second and third degree burns to her hand and face. It was inoperative for six weeks. So did she sue? Of course she didn't. This is the 1930s where our abuse was abuse. She said, I won't sue because I know how this business works. And I will never work again. I will return to work on one condition. No more fireworks. And the film company was all like, well, that's a swell day. And speaking of swelling, y'all remember that internet rumor that swore this shadowy figure in the back was one of the munchkins hanging himself? Yeah, that was false. Oh Sorry to God. keep you in the cornflakes, internet, and feel free to voice your displeasures in the comments, because those are always fun to read. But the shadow that we see indeed belongs to a bird, and not an angel spreading his wings. But you would want one of them to hang themselves, because our next up fact is really disturbing. So disturbing, I didn't know whether to leave it in. But of course I'm going to tell you anyway. Apparently, all of the actors who played the Munchkin stayed at a nearby hotel called the Culver Hotel. And a lot of them got drunk most nights and were having little people orgies. And allegedly, some of that freaky deaky shit spilled onto the set. And according to Julie Garland's ex-husband, Sid Loft, they will harass Judy Garland by putting their hands up her skirt. Mind you, she was a teenager, and most of them were in their 40s. A lot of disgusting 1930s. She was following the yellow brick road. They thought she was a yellow brick. Moving on to the next f***ed up facts. Not only were they fish filleting Margaret Hamilton, her stunt double got burnt too. Can you believe that shit? Landing her spending months in the hospital after a prop broom exploded. The same exploding prop broom also burnt Margaret Hamilton. I mean, this broke, this can't catch a break. I guess that's why everyone thought she was the older witch. Hmm. Let's keep it moving down to the song. Now, I can't play the song because YouTube is going to flag my video, so I'll sing it. Oh, wow, the rainbow. Okay, that's enough of that. That song that pretty much defined a whole generation was almost cut from the movie. The mayor thought it was too slow, boring, and depressing for kids, but some producers were like, that you cut my shit 
I'm cutting the f up out of here. So Louis B. Bayer said, yeah, whatever, mother and left it in. And speaking of motherfucker, motherfucker, how come you didn't like and subscribe to my channel yet? What you waiting on? And hit that notification bell too while you're at it. Let's get going to some more shit that'll make you think God you were born in the age of color TV. And that's being a lion ain't easy. It's no secret, all of the cast was pretty much uncomfortable in their costumes, and that's a serious understatement. Let me be real. They were fucking miserable. They were miserable sitting in the makeup chair, putting them on. They were miserable wearing them all day, and it was a pain in the ass to take them off. And since the production had high demands of time, they asked the Cowardly Lion actor Bill Lahr not to eat so that he won't mess up his makeup, giving him just milkshakes and soups. I mean, they basically had my man on the juice cleanse. But after the production went on for years, he said, Fuck that, I want Mickey D's. Reapply this makeup after lunch, bitch. And after all the hoopla, after all that starving Judy Garland to death, putting up with the little people's sexy parties, getting slapped by the director, almost burning to death, and after all of that, The Wizard of Oz only made $3 million dollars in the box office. According to the CPI inflation calculator, that's around $64.3 million dollars of today's money. And since the budget was $2.8 million, adjusted for today's currency, it would equal to $60 million dollars. A $4.3 million dollar profit is hardly worth a lifetime of physical and psychological trauma. But hey, hey, show business! After 80 plus years of the film's existence, it's still the gold standard of cinema innovation. The Wizard of Oz pushed the boundaries on literally every Every area of film production, and like anything that's first, it usually has a f***ed up backstory. Thank you for making it this far in the show. I'm Mr. Brown, and like always, don't take yourself too seriously. Here's the top comments from our community poll. Judy Garland, plain and simple, is a timeless performance. I remember standing in line with my family waiting to go see The Wiz. Who could ever forget the Cowardly Lion? Whoa, the memories, the memories. How is it not 100% going to the original? It's beyond me. I think the songs were better in The Wiz. But the story of The Wizard of Oz is better. Hmm. I enjoyed a few more songs in the original over Wiz. The Wiz is great and all, but let's be real. The Wizard of Oz is on another level. Great analogy. Scarecrow equals farmers. Tin Man equals factory workers. Cowardly Lion equals politicians. Great. Original all day, baby. The OG original with the swinging munchkins and everything. Thank you for everybody for commenting, and I'll see you next time. Check out this other video if you want to see more of the Brown Film Show.